Hello everybody. This is yet another unboxing video of a UHQR, kind of everybody's talking about. It's the kind of blue UHQR. And it's actually my first uh, really real jazz album. Of course, I have records from Ella Fitzgerald. I have Sarah Vaughan. I kind of like those, those artists, but um, Thanks to, to Mike Esposito from the In Groove and also Michael Ludwig from 45 RPM. I'm getting more into, into jazz. Usually I'm very much into soul and disco, but these two guys um, are opening up my mind and educate me in other genres of music. So I would like to thank both of them for their, for their special input. And uh, so therefore, greetings from Cologne to Düsseldorf, Michael. <laughs> Um, hopefully we meet one day. Uh, what got me first to uh, the channels of Michael and Mike were a discussion about lacquers. There's an Austrian company, I think it was an Austrian company, who brought out lacquers from certain albums. I think if you're watching this you know what lacquers are, I'm not going into the history of it. Uh, what I can say about that topic, because uh, I have this discussion with some friends of mine and my point of view is I have some re some some lacquers in my collection. This one is from the beginning of the the 60s. They belong to, to Elvis and um, be no, they were given to Elvis so he had to listen to songs he might record in or not. Honestly, they are not enjoyable to listen because they really hadn't been taken care of. They were wet, they were kept somewhere in the basement. I know, don't know the story of it, but I know when I got them, they looked in a very bad shape. So um, you might see the, the light. There is uh, even, I, I have a degritter de and I, 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 you know, sound wise, there's nothing more I can, I can do. This is the, the back side of it. But anyway, uh, I didn't buy the lacquers because of an absolute outstanding sound quality from a demo recording of a song I was recorded. I wanted them out of historical reasons. Um, anyway, to the lacquers. Uh, I do understand Mike's position if he says, okay, I pay a certain amount of money and how much do I get for the money? How many spins do I get? What sound quality do I get from that? And I totally understand his point of view. But if you are willing to pay and if you can spare the money to get the lacquers, we're not talking about a financial as aspect. Like I said, I'm totally understanding this. But when you have the opportunity to buy the lacquers, you're not buying them out of financial reason. You're buying them because you want to have the opportunity to experience something. And in this case, to experience the closest you will ever get to listen to a master tape. So I thought about it. If I would be given the opportunity to buy this kind of set uh, for Dusty in Memphis, hell, I would jump to it. I wouldn't even think twice. I wouldn't think about the money. Um, I would buy this to have the experience, even for, for two or three times, to listen to the closest to the master tape. And honestly, I wouldn't even listen to it on my system. I would try to find someone with a high-end stereo system and I would ask this person if I would be able to listen on that system. Just to have the experience. There's the financial aspect Mike pointed out, but for me, if I have the opportunity, it's an emotional aspect, an opportunity aspect. So, yeah, like I said, I would jump to the opportunity, but the, the good thing is you, you can decide. You know, it's, it's, it's the same with the UHQR. You can buy the Japanese version from 1980, where everyone or many people are saying there's outstanding. You can buy the original stereo version. You can buy whatever version you prefer, the MoFi version, whatever. Um, but as far as I know, 25,000 people uh, paid a very, very high price, you know, uh, to, to get the ultimate experience, to listen to 
the best sounding possible way. So it's all in your decision if you if you want to do that or not. You know, like I said, for me, it would be a totally emotional aspect to have that opportunity for this experience and not like how much do I get out of the record. Like I said, I do understand both sides and this topic brought me to both of these channels. So, uh, like I said, it's it's all in your uh, your decision how you want to do it. So, um, my first encounter with Miles Davis that I, of course, I knew Miles Davis, um, but uh, my first encounter to actually buy a Miles Davis record was when Mike Esposito presented this um, the soundtrack from uh, from Sam Records. Uh, I think it was in 1958 when he recorded that in in in, Fra in France. And uh, it's a, it's a ten. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a ten inch. Uh, it's a ten inch record. It's uh, beautiful uh, packaging. It did cost about twenty seven euro. It's from Sam Records, and uh, this is the back side. As an OB, uh, I was uh, hooked. I listened to this record at least once a week, and it's been beautifully done. So this was actually the first time. I bought a Miles Davis record, and uh, everybody's like, "Bitches Brew" is the ultimate album. So I listened to it two or three times, and I really wanted to like that album. But it's oh, honestly, it's not my cup of tea. It's it just not gets to me. Um, so when uh, uh, the talk came up with the UHQRs and Mike was talking about it and Michael was talking about it and uh, other companies uh, and other YouTubers, uh, I wanted to have one because it's a great album. I got the historical aspect of that. I, I saw many documentaries, read a lot about it and having so much talent in one room, it's, it's a great story. So. We now have uh, January the 23rd, and I think this uh, was released uh, <laughs> somewhere last year. Um, thankfully, they had 25,000 versions of that released, or units released, so I was still able to get the record for a decent price. I got offers from 200 euro to 800 euro. And uh, luckily, I found a seller on Discogs. It was uh, his name is uh, Munich Schall, uh, where I could get the record for around 176 euros, and that was the cheapest I could find it on the internet. And guess what? The package came. First of all, I'm very, very happy about the way it has been packed. Uh, when you buy uh, records, and I'm sure every one of you is having the experience that the packaging uh, sometimes came in a, in a, in a pizza, uh, um, you know, stuff. And <laughs> I had someone uh, even put it in a bag and put some uh, tape around it and send it to me. Uh, uh, sometimes the post is not handling that stuff uh, correct, so therefore I'm I'm very happy. The shipping was free from Munich Schall um, to get it in that way. They even have the uh, the acoustic sound uh, taping on it, so I think it was the original package it came in. I don't know. So yeah, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna open it up. This one is huge. Okay, I have to put it down because it's really, really, really high. So you get a lot of this inside the package. I might show it to you. This is how, it, how it's looking. I really have to put it down. Sorry, guys. Okay. Ah, now I get it. It's huge. And it's heavy. Oh, 
So I actually ordered uh, two records from them, the UHKR kind of blue and the Nielsen Schmielsen uh, from, uh, from MoFi. Uh, Nielsen Schmielsen, I love the record and it's uh, sound wise, it's uh, many people say or from what I've read, it's the, the best version available from MoFi. So um, they also had it for, for a decent price, so they shipped everything together. I'm very excited to know the number of my UHKR because um, uh, someone pointed out that the earlier versions of that box set were having some issues with the vinyl being loud and some other stuff. So. Alright, so this has been uh, really good wrapped. So, first of all, uh, the Nielsen Schmielsen original master recording. Uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of the back, but I'm, I'm sure you, most of you are familiar with, with this. So, and here it is. The supposed to be ultimate version of kind of blue because uh, nobody thinking that the record company is ever giving out the real tapes again and uh, also depending on the condition of the tape. So I'm pretty sure uh, that sound wise also depending on the condition of the tape, who knows what sound wise is there to do. So uh, yeah, this is the, the package, front, this is the bag. It looks beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So, let's open it up. Usually if I get these kind of uh, high-end products, I'm always uh, kind of fighting with myself if I open it up or if I'm listen to it but in this kind it's uh, yeah it's the experience I, I want to have I never uh, heard a UHKR or a one step record so uh, let's see it and they also announced a 45 rpm version of this one so I might get that as well <laughs> but let's see so Pretty sure you all have seen the hyper stickers, and um, it's it's been beautifully done. You have, for the amount of money, you really have something um, extraordinary. They really went beyond. I have never seen this before. Really, I have never seen this kind of uh, quality before. Okay, let's put it here. Okay, we have... What do we have? This is the, the record and I'm... Um, I do expect that on this kind of high-end uh, product that they have these... Uh, um, that's, I call them the MoFi sleeves, but they have these uh, high-end quality sleeves on that so you don't get um, a scratch on that. Is there a reason, may one of you guys know that, why they are sent and uh, put in the record separately and not in the sleeve? Okay, this is the, the sleeve. Um, beautiful. You can, you can feel and touch the quality of, uh, of this printing. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. Um, I read somewhere that Everything is exactly as the original, um, as the original pressing, except that there wasn't um, on the logo of Columbia something missing at the A. Otherwise, they 
they did everything the same. Uh, and I'm also happy I'm not having one of the olive pressings. I have 14,000, let me see it, 40,804. It's up there. I hope you guys can see that. It's, it's, <laughs> I can't stop touching it. It feels great. Um, here you have uh, the liner notes with, with pictures, but I'm pretty sure you already have seen uh, them. And this is the, the acoustic sounds, summer and fall catalog. And what have we here? Something about the, uh, the specification and the manual. And yeah. That's it. I don't think something is missing. If you think something is missing, let me know. But um, there's no damage to anything. Oh, there's something else. Um, the limited edition custom pressing, 25,000. This is a certificate uh, of this. And Really, it's. I'm blown away. Actually, I haven't seen this kind of stuff not before. It's awesome. So, thank you, Acoustic Sounds. Uh, thanks for, for watching. I will give it a spin. Uh, I don't have a reference copy, so I won't tell you which sounds better or not. In the end, it's all kind of personal taste and opinion and what kind of system you're using anyway. But. Uh, yeah, we talked about the lacquers. Uh, you've seen the UHQR. I'm really eager to uh, to play it and we'll do it. And um, yeah, if you have the chance to get this, uh, like I said, Munich Schall uh, is offering it for, for less than 200 euro. Get it because you really get um, a high-end quality product, which you actually don't want to miss. So I'm happy that they did uh, 25,000. So people like me who were not so into it and were not one of the first people who ordered it were having a chance to have that kind of experience. So till next time, have a great weekend and thank you for watching. Bye.